Welcome to Barcelona. It's the final race of the Classic Motorsport Top 1991 Formula 1 season here at Barcelona, the Spanish Grand Prix. And I welcome every single one of you here to enjoy this beautiful final race with me. My name is Pascal Mikula and I'm today joined by nobody actually. Um, I decided to take up commentating slash admin duties for this final race to make sure everything goes as planned. And to start it off, we still have about eight and a half minutes to go for warm up here. There's only nine drivers currently entered. The other ones either did, either went away for some reason or told us at the final at the eleventh hour that they felt like they didn't have to race simply because they weren't fast enough. Anyway, now looking at the complete and uh, complete driver standings, it is a very very close tie at the top, and I can tell you, well, since I took myself out of the standings, actually, it's a very very close tie at the top with the standings as follows. Fulgencio Alfonso is currently leading the championship in that case with 16 points. Lucas Bonetta, who is not driving today, who literally told us half an hour ago that he doesn't want to race, is tied at 16 points with him. Third place, or on the screen as you can see, fourth, is Juan Guerrero, who actually joined at the 11th hour because he in the end wanted to race, is at all 16 points. Dami Kuratko, in the same boat as Lucas Bonetta, is at 10 points. Joe has 8 points. Matt Sebagnoni has 3 points for Brabham. And still Andri Baku. Andri Baku, who only raced in the first race at Interlagos, has 2 points. Eris Batas, who is also not racing today, in the Cologne has 1 point. Federico Svanger with the McLaren has 1 point. Christian Stieger has 1 point for La Rousse. He's actually today in the Modena, so that's the first time we've seen a Modena on track all year. And Juan Rabito in the second Tyrrell is also at one point. Looking at the Constructors' Championship, Leighton House Ilmore has 29 points, Minardi has 26 points, McLaren 17, Tyrrell 17, Lotus 8, Brabham 3, Ligier has two points, Cologne has one point, and the LaRousse Lola team has one point as well. So basically today the championship will be decided between Alfonso, Guerrero, well, Joe Gillette can technically win it as well, so there's that. Looking at the, basically, looking at, here are the scenarios for the championship. Fulgencio Alfonso and Juan Guerrero are definitely the favorites for the championship. They're both at 16 points. Which basically means whoever of those two finishes ahead wins. If both Fulgencio Alfonso and Juan Guerrero do not finish and Joe Gillette wins this race, he is <laughs> he will be champion as well. Other than that, those are the three drivers who are in the fight today. But um, the Constructors' Championship is also still quite open, well, kind of, between Minardi and Leighton House. Since there will be no Leighton House racing today in Spain, uh, since I have, well, I've withdrawn and I'm currently talking to you. If Juan Guerrero finishes at least fourth, he's got it. If Juan Guerrero finishes at least fourth in today's race, he wins the Constructors' Championship for Minardi. So, let's have a quick look at the clock. There are still three minutes... Still three and a half... About three minutes and forty seconds left on the clock for warm-up. So... Getting... Going on board with Juan Guerrero. No, with Juan... Ra Fulgencio Alfonso, my bad, I'm sorry. Let's have a quick look at the starting grid for today's race. So, Boris Jawicki starts on pole position. 
On in second place it is Fulgencio Alfonso. Third place Juan Capito. Fourth place is the Lotus of Joe Gillett. Fifth place the Modena of Christian Stieger. Sixth place the Brabham of Matthew Sibagnoni. Seventh is Marcel Yehoda, the Slovak driver in the Lotus Judd. Eighth place Juan Guerrero in the Minardi. As I said, he literally came here like three, three, forty-five minutes ago. So he actually first try eighth place. In ninth place, rounding out the field is Frederico Zwanger in the second. McLaren. Oh, that was a close one, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, we've got to look at the Dallara. The Dallara Jot of Boris Wiki. He is in a very, very good place today to take home a win. But so is Juan Guerrero. He's not in a not not to take the race win, but to take the championship and the constructors championship. So let's hope for the best as we head into F1 1991 in Barcelona. We'll be right back. We're back for one final time. We are going to race in F1 1991 here in Barcelona. Drivers are joining the grid, 6 seconds, 5 seconds to go, here we go, and the formation lap is underway. Boris Sawicki leads away the cars on the final formation lap of the season. Everyone gets away good. Let's see, are there any incidents? No, it's a... Del well, Matt Sabagnoni goes onto the grass, but I don't think that was intentional, that was probably just a little bit of lag. So let's go through the grid once again before we are go for the Spanish Grand Prix. Borisowicki has taken his maiden pole position here in the Dallara Judd 191. Fulgencio Alfonso is second place with the Tyrrell Honda 020. Third place, his teammate Juan Rapido, Mr. I am Speed, also in the Tyrrell Honda 020. Joe Gallet. Outside the top three, but in the Lotus Jet 102B, he is in P4. Christian Stieger in the Modena 291 with the Lamborghini V12 P5. P6, Matthew Sipagnoni in the V12 Brabham BT6Y. Oh, careful, careful there, careful there, mate. P7. Marcel Jehoda in the other Lotus Judd 102B. 8th place, Juan Guerrero in the Minardi M191 with the Ferrari E12. Rounding out the field in 9th place, Frederico Subanga in the MP4-6 McLaren with the Honda V12. So that's a great for us today and we are almost done with the formation lap for the Spanish Grand Prix. Let's just wait for the cars to show up and then we'll be ready to go shortly. All right. This should be good. Yes, the last few cars are coming around the corner and drivers are doing burnouts, warming up their tires at all costs. Turn one is gonna be a sensation. All right, is everyone on the grid? Yes, I do think so. We have starters orders. Let's wait. And the lights are on for one final time. It is go, go, go. Lots of wheel spin at the front. Look at that, Borussia Wiki is in the front. Look at that, there's a Modena. That is Christian Stieger in P3. Going into turn one now. Breaking zone for turn one. It is, oh my goodness. It's Fulgencio Alfonso in the lead, followed by Borussia Wiki. Christian Stieger, P3. Borussia Wiki goes off and into the wall. He's into the wall and he's lost his left front wheel. This is unbelievably bad luck for the pole sitter today. He is out of the race. I cannot believe it. What a sensation. Not the best sensation for Boris the Wiki for sure, but a sensation nonetheless. So, let's have a look at that again. 
Boris, uh, Fulgencio Alfonso is P1, followed by Christian Stieger in P2, Joe Gallet is P3, Matt Zabagnoni P4, Juan Rapido has fallen back to P5, he's being attacked by Juan Guerrero! Look at that, Juan Guerrero is looking on the inside, he is not quite past yet, no, that's not gonna happen in that corner. Juan Guerrero P6, uh, Marcel Chahota P8, and Frederico Swanger is following, is following the field at his slow and steady pace, and P9, <laughs> Boris the Wiki is already out. It's only lap 1 of 20. Fulgencio well, Alfonso is now leading the Spanish Grand Prix comfortably. He is 4 seconds ahead of Christian Stieger, who is now under attack from the Judd Engine Lotus of Joe Gallet. P2 is being fought out here at the start of lap 2. Christian Stieger is getting into the slipstream of Joe Gallet. Going into turn one, it is Jokelet in second place. Other than that, the cars are very much in order and Juan Guerrero is still P6. So, it's only a 20 lap race, mind you. But, it looks like we already have quite an order established. Although, the best of the rest position is being fought out quite handily. Currently, P4 is Matt Zabagnoni, and there's collision! There's a collision between Juan Rapido and Matt Zabagnoni. Juan actually goes into the back of the Brabham driver. Unbelievable, we need to see a replay of that. Let's have a replay of that real quick. Juan. Ah, uh, Juan, he, he actually just braked way too late there. This is unbelievable. Oh my goodness, that means now... That Juan Rapido is in P7, Matt Zabagnoni is P6, and Marcel Yahoda in the Lotus Judd, with the Judd V8 he loves to call it, is P4. No, actually, hold on. As uh, Fulgencio Alfonso crosses the start finish line, in the lead, very comfortably, Jokelet is P2, Christian Stieger is P3 in the modern R, P4 is Juan Guerrero, who is chasing him down hard, P5 is Marcel Jehoda, P6 is... Oh, what is going on in P6 there? It is Matt Zebagnoni being chased by Juan Rapido, those two, their battle is not done yet, not by a long shot. Let's have a look at that. The Tyrrell driver's onboard camera shows us the Brabham right in front of him. What a race we have had so far. Of course, very, very unfortunate for Boris Sawicki. Let me just check real quick if he is... No, he's not. Okay. Ah, okay. He has actually left completely. This is... Uh, I suppose this is just some anger in his in his being right now because he's out in, he was out in the first lap which is very sad but you know oh here we go oh what was that that was quite interesting as well as looking at this battle here there's currently two battles on track Christian Stieger in the slow but honestly very very beautiful sounding Modena being followed by Juan Guerrero who has actually gone onto the grass here Juan Guerrero who has had a whole lot of practice basically about half an hour and here he goes onto the straight we go and Juan Guerrero has just taken P3 from Christian Stieger unbelievable And it looks like Juan Rapido has actually made a mistake somewhere. Oh yeah, here we go. Going on to the final start finish straight, he has actually left the track. So, okay, that happened there. Okay, let's run down the order real quick. Fulgencio Alfonso is leading. And looking at the current championship position, Fulgencio Alfonso may just come out with 26 points and an easy championship. Of course, his one his one opponent during this race, Juan Guerrero, is down in P3, as we can see here. He is currently chasing down 
Joe Gillette. And Juan, with his, you know, he didn't have a lot of practice. And he admits that, but he is doing very, very well. Chasing down P2. Chasing down second place, Joe Gillette. While Fulgencio Alfonso is, well... Did I miss something? I was in replay mode the whole time. I apologize for that. Well, while Fulgencio Alfonso is... Leading the race very comfortably and therefore also... Leading the championship very comfortably. We have a fight on our hands. One that is not quite brewing yet, but is definitely coming up. Second place being fought out by Juan Guerrero and Joe Gillette. Meanwhile, look who is back. It is Juan Rapido on the back of Matt Sebagnoni's Brabham. Those two. Oh, both lock up their brakes, but Matt stays in front. This is the battle for the final points paying position. Matt has a total of three points currently in the championship, and Juan Rapido has one point. So definitely, Juan he he wants he wants a point definitely. Meanwhile, Matt of course also wants a point. It's very very valuable for both teams in this case. But those two, they're fighting like it's for the championship. Comparing the two cars real quick, here we have the Brabham Yamaha powered BT60Y. I got about 600 horsepower there in that thing. It is um, a V12 car, it is quite heavy. So that means it also uses a lot of fuel. But it is very powerful. The Turtle Honda Zero to Zero is lighter, has a smaller, has an engine with less cylinders, but it's a little bit more powerful actually. You got about 620 horsepower in that car. So generally, Juan, he's playing with the better cars in that one. He's definitely playing with the better cars, and having a look at that, he is going on the outside. And there's Matt. Matt is still defending furiously, but now he's lost it. Now he's lost it, he braked too late. And Juan swoops by and takes 6th place. Now... For P2 the fight, of course, being between Joe Gillett and Juan Guerrero. Joe, oh, he is... Okay, he just lost control for a little bit and... Joe is definitely pushing hard. That Lotus has no business being at the front of the field, but Joe makes it work somehow. And Juan Guerrero, he's right behind him. Now, going to the final corner again. We're on lap 5 out of 20. One quarter of the race is finished. And here comes Juan going through the slipstream. He slingshots past the Lotus driver and is now in second place. But that's not going to help him very much, simply because... Juan uh, Fulgencio Alfonso, my bad, the Spaniard on home turf is about 20 seconds ahead of him either way. So looking at the current championship standings, the provisional championship standings, Fulgencio Alfonso would, in this case, if he does not retire or if he does not make a mistake and loses first place to Juan Guerrero, ho oh, ho, he would come out with 26 points, the championship trophy. Juan Guerrero would come out with 22 points from 6 points for 2nd place. And 3rd place would actually go to Joe Gillette who gets 4 points. And therefore has 12 points. We'll just disregard Lucas Bonetti because he's not driving and doesn't deserve it. But there's that. And about the Constructors Championship, if the race goes on as it is right now we would have a Constructors Champion from Italy, Minardi. But, well, let's have a quick look. Something must have happened here with Matt Sabagnoni. Because he has lost a lot of ground to Juan Rapido. Let's rewind real quick. Oh, I can see what happened there. 
Oh, he just... Oh, no, he lost the rear under braking. Oh, that's a bad, bad mistake. But Matt keeps going in seventh place. Meanwhile, look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Fourth place being fought out between three cars. Well, not anymore because Juan Rapido has just gotten it. Oh, and that's Marcel Yahoda going wide. That fight is far from over. Because here comes Christian Stieger. West Germany goes through and the Italian car with an Italian engine. Going past the going past the Slovak driver in a British car with a British engine. Now Juan Rapido, he's he's pulling away fast. He lost some ground in the first stages of the race. For sure. Juan Guerrero is definitely trying to catch up to Fulgencio Alfonso, who at this point, in lap 8 out of 20, you can see it right there in the distance. That was Federico Svanga. So he's going coming close to lapping him. Oh, be careful, Fulgencio. You don't want to hit the wall there. Because that might just spell that that might just spell the end of your championship run there. Now, the Terrell driver, he has to think long and hard where to overtake Federico Wanger. Wanger, he's not a dirty driver by any means. Oh no. He's just a bit slow. So he has to look. Oh no, okay. That's all stat issue. Wanger actually just went off in the quick chicane there. He actually went onto the gravel trap. Back to the fight for P5. On board the Modena. This is Christian Stieger trying to get three, uh, get, trying to get two points instead of one. Wait, hold on! What just happened there? That is Juan Rapido. Let's have a quick look at that again. A little replay time. Juan Rapido breaks too late. Oh, it looks. Oh, he must have had a brake issue there. Oh, and he actually hits the tire wall. But he keeps the engine running, and that is important. You need to keep the engine running, because these Formula 1 cars, they don't have an onboard starter. They do not have an onboard starter, because of the weight. An onboard starter would require a bigger battery than what these cars already have, and also the starter itself. Or you use, you know, pressured air. And all of that would add to the weight of the car. And they, of course, you want to keep your car as light as possible, so they do not have an onboard starter, these cars. So if you have to, if you if you if you kill your engine, if you stall it somehow, you have to pray that you are going fast enough to bump start it. Otherwise your race is over. And Juan Rapito, he's done a very good job. He kept the engine running. Oh, someone locked up big time there. I think that was Christian Stieger. That doesn't do any good to your tires, and here we go, that's for against Alfonso. The gap between Fulgencio Alfonso and Juan Guerrero at this moment is 27 seconds. 27 seconds. I don't think... I don't think that... Uh, no. Juan, Juan Guerrero, he's not going fast enough. He's doing 28. 1 minute 28 times. Uh, mid 128s, while Fulgencio Alfonso is doing 1 minute 27 low. So that gap, if anything, it's gonna increase. So technically, Alfonso, he doesn't need to go that fast, he can just back off if he wants to. He would win the championship nonetheless. But backing off, that is one word, that is one term Juan Rapido does not like using or does not like being exposed to. He is not backing off at all. He is behind the Modena of Christian Stieger once again, and he wants to get past at any cost, probably. So currently what we're seeing here in front is places 4, 5 and 6 being fought out between 3 drivers from 3 nations and 3 different cars with 3 different engines. And here goes Ron Rapido, he slingshots past Stiga. oh what a late move by Stiga there! And who's gonna come out ahead? Oh they're going side by side through turn 1, side by side through turn 2, Stiga's ahead! Stiga's still ahead of the Terrell driver. 
unbelievable. What a move by the West German and Juan Rapido. He's still right behind him. Stieger defends hard but fair. Going into turn four. Unbelievable. What do we have? And now in my Juan Guerrero. You can see on the map. And there, who's that? Who's that? That is. Oh no, that's Marcel Yehoda. That is Marcel Yehoda. He has spun and lost his front wing. Let's have a look at that once again. While the two lovebirds behind him were fighting for fifth, fourth place. Well, for fifth place. Oh, what an unfortunate incident. And Stiga almost hit him. He had to really rely on his reflexes for that that is for sure and meanwhile Rapido is still behind Stiga he goes for it into Lakaix oh very very close very very close between the two drivers and Stiga he attacks a oh, 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 oh I think Stiga actually had a little bit of honesty there that's why he had to back off but this is some exciting racing. We only had nine drivers start the race and only eight are currently in the race after all. Wait, who the, hold on, hold on. Why was why was Joe Gillette in the pits? Joe Gillette actually just made a pit stop. Have a look at that. Where is he now come out? He's now in... I, I cannot believe it. Fourth place for Joe Gillette. Meanwhile... There is, there is Marcel Yahora in the pits. He's getting a new nose. He's getting four new fresh rubber tires. That is, he's got the Goodyear Eagle tires. He's got four fresh ones of those. And three, two, one. He's ready to go at some point. Here he goes. That was a slow stop. Oh, and his engine is smoking. That's not a good sign. Let's hope that engine doesn't blow up. Meanwhile, what is going on here? That is Fulgencio Alfonso who has lapped Matt Sabagnoni. We're now on lap 12 out of 20. Basically. And meanwhile, Joe Gillette, after having made... It seems like he made a regular pit stop there. And that's something we haven't seen all season. He made a regular pit stop for tires. And he's now chasing Juan Rapido. Juan Rapido, who is currently in third place now. You know, fast but a little bit inconsistent. That's Juan Rapido. Meanwhile, Joe Gillette in the Lotus. He is chasing him down in fourth place. While in fifth place, we can see Christian Stiger, the West German. As I said, in, Italian, in the Italian car with an Italian engine. And I can tell you that, that Italian engine has some Italian temperament adding to it. Meanwhile, Juan Guerrero. Hold on, there's a car slow. It's Marcel Johor. Oh no! Big crash! Big crash there! No, no! That is Juan Guerrero who ran into the side of Marcel Yehoda who has spun at the chicane. Let's see that from Juan's perspective. Oh! Almost too late! Unbelievable! No! He tried- oh, he saw him there! He tried to avoid him, but hitting the brakes, he actually ran into the side of him! Unbelievable! Where's Marcel Jehoda? Is he still running? Unbelievable! We have three retirements! A third of the field is out of the race! What in the ever-loving holy world has just happened there? And if I get that right, that means Frederico Svanger, who is currently in the picture, is picking up 6th place. And so he does, I think. Well, he was a lap back, but he's going to pick up 6th place and 1 point. Matt Sabagnoni, who is currently 6th place, will pick up 5th. And he will get 2 points, and Frederico Svanger will get 1 point. Unbelievable! And with that said, Fulgencio Alfonso has just claimed the driver's title for Formula 1 1991. Here he is, the champion of 91 going past. This is unbelievable. This is actually incredible what just happened there. We're on lap 14 out of 20. There's 7 laps to go. And now in second place is his teammate, Juan Rapido. The last thing I thought was going to happen today would be seeing a Tyrrell Honda 1-2. Unbelievable. 
absolutely unbelievable. And Marcel Yehoda and Juan Guerrero are having a talk. Who's that? That's someone off the track. That is Federico's banger, but he keeps the. I think that's his, I think that's his new favorite spot there. Unbelievable! He should still keep going. Wanger is sixth. Well, he lets people by very quickly there. It looks very much like, it looks very much like, we have a tier one two at our hands, and it's lap fourteen out of twenty. Unbelievable! Unbelievable what I'm seeing. Oh my goodness, and Juan Guerrero and Marcel Jehoda are currently in the paddock having a talk. I don't think I don't think there's any hard feelings between the two. Those two are they're 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 rivals, but they're also friends, so there's that. Meanwhile, Fulgencio Alfonso is starting his 15th lap. And here we have a little battle on our hands. It's battle for second place. You think you think this would be set in stone already, but it surely isn't. Lap 14 out of 20 for Joe Gillett and for Juan Rapido. The Tyrrell actually being haunted and chased by the Lotus. What are we seeing here? This is surely a great finale for the F1 1991 series. Just too bad that there's only that few drivers who started. I think some people would have loved to see some of that excitement live on track. Oh, and as Chocolat is having a half spin. Don't listen to me, Joe. Do I drive your race? And Fulgencio Alfonso going through the chicane to be ready to lap Frederico Wanger yet another time. How many laps is he behind by now? He's two laps, he's getting lapped a second time at this point. So, that is fine, he will still be classified. The 10% rule in this case would be two laps behind, which he is. And meanwhile, Christian Stieger is enjoying his fourth place. What is that?! Am I seeing this right?! Is this Juan Rapido into the wall and out of the race? It is! It is! Unbelievable! Going into turn one, he locks up the brakes. Oh, and he loses it under acceleration. Oh no, and hits the wall. That is Juan Rapido out of the race as well. Unbelievable! We're gonna have a Tyrrell win the race and a Lotus come into second place. That is Juan Rapido's chance for a second place finish gone in a heartbeat. So what that means now is Joe Gillette is finishing second place and that means Joe Gillette from Great Britain is going to finish the championship with six points and he will move ahead of Tamiko Ratko and in that place well he's gonna he's gonna be third in the championship with that or, or fourth technically with that finish in the Lotus. He just has to keep it together. This is unbelievable. We're almost at the end of the race. And stuff like this is happening. So what's happening now is that Fulgencio Alfonso on his 16th lap is coming up to lap uh, Christian Stieger. You can see the Modena in front of him there. He's slow. He's slow. What's going on? He's very slow. Let's see his steering. It's still straight. So I think he is just... I don't think he had an accident or anything. I think he's really just backed off. Because looking at the map, looking at the track map you have here on the left of the screen very comfortably, Christian Stieger is about, let's say, two-thirds of a lap ahead of Matthew Sibagnoni, which, you know, allows for him to back off. Either that, or he's low on fuel for some reason. Uh, speaking of Matt Sabagnoni, here he is. With that little camera here from the pit lane. There he goes past the Brabham V12 screaming. And it looks like Fulgencio Alfonso has also backed off. Which is completely understandable. He's in the lead by almost a whole lap. 
Look at looking at looking at again looking at the map. Alfonso, he's only three corners behind Joe Gillette. Wait, hold on. What's and Joe Gillette? He's pushing. But is that Fulgencio Alfonso actually has his pit request on? But he's not going to the pits. No. He's doing one more lap. What's that? He's slow. Something's going on. Something's going on with the Spanish driver in the tail. He's very, very slow. And he's starting to blink. Oh, I hope his... I, I, I sincerely hope his internet connection does not pack up now. That would be the ultimate cliffhanger, honestly. He just let Joe Gillette... Uh, he just let Christian Stiger pass. And you can hear it, that engine, I don't know, something's wrong with it. Something's going on, it does not sound very healthy. Going on board with him. He might be low on fuel. We're on lap 18. Lap 18 out of 20. Looking at that, he might be low on fuel. And Chocolate he is still pushing. Christian Stieger is also starting to push now. Matt Sabagnoni is in the pits. And out of the pits again. And, well, Fred Manga, well, he's just, he's just turning his laps. Can't say anything about him. But something's going on with Juan, uh, with, with Fulgencio Alfonso. He is certainly slow. Let's listen closely. He might be he might be very much low on fuel. I don't know. He is coasting across the start finish line there. Unbelievable. We might actually see Juan uh, Fulgencio Alfonso. I'm sorry, I keep for, I keep switching it up. We might see the leader run out of fuel on the final lap here. Who knows? And and I'm and I'm seeing oh no that is Vanga Fred Vanga and it looks like a connection issue so he's out of the race as well unbelievable and it's oh and it's Christian Stieger he's slow as well what is going on here he's idling so he might not be able to find a gear in that case. Looking at that, on Chocolat, he's pushing. He sees. He's seeing his. <laughs> he's seeing his distance to Fulgencio Alfonso basically cut in half every lap almost. Because you know, he's he's really just coasting home. He's got one and a half laps to go. Meanwhile, Chocolat, he's he's he is pulling all registers from that Lotus Judd. We might have a big upset here. What? Oh god, what's going on here? And that's... Oh, that's just Christian Stieger. He's letting past his... Oh, here we go. Here's what happened to Fred Wanger. He's lost his front wing and his left front wheel. He's out of the race. What's he doing? He's out of the race. Is he trying to get back to the pits there? He can't do that. Yeah, I think he's out of the race for good. Let's not let's but let's not discuss that. Let's have a look at Joe Gallet. Joe Gallet is pushing like hell and there's smoke. That is Matt Sabagnoni who locked up the brakes. Joe Gallet is pushing like all hell has just broken loose. And yeah. The race is actually over. I'm sorry, I completely missed that. I think... Yeah, I think Fulgencio Alfonso has just won the... Yeah, he has just won the Spanish Grand Prix. At the very last second. And here we go, here we have the top four. 
unbelievable. What we have just seen is quite unbelievable. And, well, Fred Wanger is crossing the start-finish line to record fifth place. Three laps down, so he's not classified. But... Wow. Yeah, he did uh, He did not have fuel. Fulgencio Alfonso was out of fuel across the start-finish line. He had to really coast. Unbelievable. Wow. What on earth have we literally just seen here? Ron Rapido and... Ron Rapido was out. No. Christian, don't do that. Don't do that. That was a... Now what? A race we have just seen today. What a race we have seen today. Now, that means looking at the final standings, that means Juan Rapido has won the championship of Formula 1 1991. What am I saying? Fulgencio Alfonso has won and I'm sorry. <laughs> Fulgencio Alfonso has won the championship for Formula 1 1991. Second place we have Joe Gillette who goes up the ranks. Third place is Christian Stieger who secures a podium for Modena. Never thought I'd say that but the Modena team has recorded a podium in the very last race. Now, I just want to say a few words personally from an admin point of view as well. Um, after this race and well sadly we saw the untimely accident of poor Sawicki in the first corner of the first lap um, other than that it was quite a joy to watch this and to be part of this I will say so long from Formula 1 1991 we have coming up soon um, the 2005 US Grand Prix as the second race in our Gold Star Series the third race in our Gold Star Series is the next coming up race, the Formula, the Formula Ford Super Sprint at Silverstone. And after that, we go into Formula 5000. Formula 5000, 1972, the European Championship, with the first race starting at Brands Hatch. And with that out of the way, I want to say thank you everybody for taking part. Those who stuck around, you guys are real, real good people. Those who didn't stick around and bailed out because they didn't, because they didn't think or something, you know who you are, and I will remember that. So don't expect being able to pick up any car in the future when you just bail out at the eleventh hour because you don't like the way things are looking. That's not very sportsmanlike. Other than that. Uh, we'll see you for Gold Star Round 2, and from Barcelona, it is so long, my name is Pascal Mikula, thank you very much, good night.